How's it going guys, Lewis back with another video. Um, as you guys can see, my Lexus is a little bit wet, so is my Gen. Um, it was raining today, so I couldn't really modify the car as much. Um, it just stopped raining and I thought to myself, what better video to make than a uh, five things I hate about my car. So unfortunately, we're not gonna make it about the Genesis today. Um, it is gonna be about the Lexus because uh, this is kind of my project car right now, I'm trying to fix it up. Um, and the Lexus I drive every day so um, there are there are definitely things that I hate about the Genesis I can't stand but in uh, today's video we're going to be focusing on the Lexus let me just give you a walk around before we even get into the video um, just to give you guys a little bit of a background this is my 2004 Lexus IS 300 um, it is the uh, sport design model so this uh, paint code I forget the number of the paint code but it is uh, the paint is called thundercloud metallic so uh, it's kind of a rare color I mean my car is not in the best shape there's a lot of dings and stuff in the side uh, but this is my Lexus and I absolutely love this car so anyways guys getting into today's video I'm just going to uh, list five things that you know when I when I get in the car from the time I get in the car or even look at the car these are just things that I can't stand but just a disclaimer for this video, I do not hate this car. I absolutely love it. So off the back, guys, the number one thing I hate about this car is not even actually the car itself. It is actually the uh, key right here. This is a uh, Lexus IS300 key. Here's the front of it. Here's the back. Um, the reason I do hate this key is um, the shell. Actually, right here at this point, once you turn the key and the ignition a lot, uh, the shell will actually break over time because it's cheap plastic and you'll have to get a new key shell for the car. So I just got this new key shell, it's brand new, but probably in six months, I, I don't doubt that I will have to get a new one. So that's probably the first thing that I hate about owning a Lexus IS300 is just how cheap the, the key shell is. It breaks all the time. So the number two reason as to why I hate my Lexus is basically the cheap interior plastic on the inside of the car so i mean that could fall into the number one reason but i'm just going to make it two reasons because i don't really hate this car um as you can see like down by this little you know door card the plastic has a lot of wear it gets scratched very easily um you can even see like by my my door handle um the plastic has already you know broken cracked right there there's scratches all in the inside of the plastic. Let me just head to the other side so I can show you guys. Yeah guys, so like I said, the interior of the Lexus IS300 itself is very cheap. It's a lot of cheap plastic, cheap hard plastic everywhere. It does get scratched and over time, uh, it does get ruined pretty bad. You can even see, you can even see right here, there's deep scratches that will not come out and that's just because the car, you know, in the early 2000s, that's just what every car consisted of was very cheap plastics. So guys, moving on, the third reason why I hate my Lexus IS300 is just because how uh, the interior has aged since I'm in the car all the time. Um, there's things that have aged really well, like the gauge cluster. It's uh, kind of like a clock looking gauge cluster. I'll show you real quick. It's really a timeless design. It's a mix of like retro, but also analog. And it's really aged well. But then you come to like the radio system and this, it has like a cassette tape in here. Um, you know, it, it, it sucks. So, you know, this is when aftermarket comes into play. I have to buy like a, you know, a eight inch touch screen and put it in there. So that's very, you know, an easy fix on the car, but it's something that I just honestly, I can't stand. Moving on to the fourth reason, guys. Um, if we just lift this armrest up right here, it actually has to be these uh, cup holders right here. So um, a lot of the time when you buy the uh, Lexus IS300, it will not have this uh, center divider piece right here. And it's kind of annoying because, for example, let's say you have, you know, a drink in your cup holder. If you're, you know, you hit the brakes, your drink will just fall over. And um, that's, you know, it's okay if your drink is sealed. But if you have like an open drink, like a Red Bull or something, and your drink spills, it'll spill all everywhere. Stain the carpets, the seats, everything will get sticky. So that's just the number four reason 
uh, why I hate my Lexus IS300, but it's a very easy fix. Um, they do make these 3D printed dividers um, on eBay or Amazon. You can pick these up pretty relatively cheap. I picked this one up for like 15 bucks and then you just uh, simply kind of slide it in where you prefer. And now you have cup holders, so you know, it won't really knock over. Um, you know, your cuffs will stay in place most of the time. So that's just a number four reason why I hate my Lexus IS300 is that whole cup holder situation, but it's a very easy fix if you buy this divider online. So guys, stepping out of the car, the number five reason would actually be right in front of us on the interior again. Um, it has to do with the dashboard. So um, I know a lot of Lexus IS300 owners can relate to this um, sticky dash basically. Uh, from I believe 03 to 05 uh, the Lexus IS300 um, the dashboard the type of paint material that was used on the uh, the dashboard that material that they use it will over time start to bubble um, on the plastic and it will become very sticky and that's why they call it you know sticky dash so if you come up here you can kind of see you know a little bit of the paint left uh, you can kind of see in this little this little crevice right here. It's a little sticky right here um, The previous owner did take care of that problem for me though um, Before I bought the car he sanded the whole dash. That's why the whole dash is uh, This whole like plastic area right here and right here. It's discolored from the actual dash That's one way to prevent sticky dash, but it um, it definitely it doesn't look good when it's sanded it's something that you know, I want to go ahead and get repainted because uh, I just want my dashboard one solid color, not like two or three different colors. So, And since we're on this topic, guys, I'll go ahead and throw in a couple of bonus things why I just can't stand this car. They didn't really implement like actual real paddle shifters on the car. Instead, uh, what they did was they put uh, buttons. So it's still, you know, kind of technically paddle shift without the paddles. Um, so you can call it like button shift or, you know, because basically like to downshift in the car, um, you you have two options right here left and right you can click either or and you click it and then you go down a gear and then to go up a gear it's actually on the back of the steering wheel right here and you click that and then you upshift um, it's kind of like in my opinion it's a very stupid design I wish they would have just went ahead went the extra mile and uh, implemented uh, paddle shifters in the car. It would have definitely aged the car a lot better. Um, I know you can take like an IS250 steering wheel and uh, adapt it on with paddle shifters, but that has to do with a lot of wiring that I don't want to get into personally. Just going back to uh, this area over here, just um, this armrest, it, it, it really kind of uh, pisses me off because, you know, it's nice to rest your arm on it, but I wish it was like one whole solid thing. And on the inside of this area, you can fit like a lot more storage space because this is really all the storage space they give you. And um, my problem is like, you know, it just, you know, since there's an opening, you can see everything and it just looks really bad. So I wish this was like closed off. And then if you wanted to lift it up, you could, and you'd have all this section for uh, storage space. Where I put my storage space, because this is not an option, I just throw everything in my glove box and it looks very sloppy. They do give you this little area also for storage space, which is really, you know, it comes in handy, but you know, if Lexus just went the extra mile and turned this all, this whole area and like, and, and closed it off and, and you can fit a lot more things in there, it would have really helped. Um, one of the last things that I, Personally, I cannot stand about this car. Um, the seats, they're pretty cool seats. Like they're they are like two-tone material, I guess you could say. Um, a portion of it is like leather, and then like 90% of the rest of the seat is like this nice soft suede. Uh, with the seats is over time, you know, the leather just really wears out. It's really not good leather material used on the seats. Here on this seat, it's already uh, it has a hole in it and then you can come over here and see just over time constant wear and tear on the seats uh, The leather will eventually crack and that honestly sucks. Also, I don't know if this is uh, every IS 300 owner But um these seats just in general, they're very I believe they're very uncomfortable Like just sitting in the seat what I experience a lot is I have like a lot of lower back pain because this portion of like the seat right here is very stiff and it, it constantly you know sitting in the seat all day driving around it really takes a toll on my back and it just you know puts my back in so much pain so honestly I've even thought about putting aftermarket seats in like bucket seats because
because even those are more comfortable than these OEM Lexus uh, seats. Like my, my Genesis Coupe, the bucket seats in there are much more comfortable than uh, these seats. And that's kind of like, it shocks you because these seats, you know, they're supposed to be luxurious with suede and leather and they're powered and, you know, it's kind of just the opposite. Like they're very uncomfortable. And on top of that, they're very heavy too. These seats weigh a lot. So I know I only said five things and so far I've given you like seven or eight things, but right now I'm just being a perfectionist. Um, just things where if, if, you know, I could talk to Toyota before they made this car and, you know, give my input, this car would be so much better. Um, I'm sure a lot of you can agree with some of the things I pointed out on this car. Just another thing on the exterior because mainly I, everything was on the interior. Um, just this, this little, this little side tab right here. Um, this, this just, this whole side marker on the side of the car just really sticks out like a sore thumb. I really wish, you know, if Toyota would have done something, they would have added like another body line right there because this is just very cheap. It doesn't look good and it doesn't age well with the car. Um, I, I personally, I hate it and I think it sticks out like a sore thumb. So going on to number nine or number 10, I've lost track guys. Let me know down in the comments. Um, just something that the US market didn't get that uh, the JDM market did get was if you guys are familiar with the IS300, you should also be familiar with the Toyota Altezza. Basically it was Japan's version of this car. Um, the Altezza was made first and then later the US got you know, an Altezza, but it was branded as a Lexus. That's how it was sold in the US, kind of like that. Um, but something that's frustrating is on the Toyota Altezza, they had power folding mirrors. On the US Lexus IS300, they don't have power folding mirrors, they're, they're manual. So um, actually one of my mirrors broke, so I bought another mirror and I thought it was a, a US mirror, but it's actually a, a JDM mirror and this is a power folding mirror. Um, I don't have everything connected to actually fold them. I wish I could show you guys. But uh, this blue mirror is a power folding mirror. And on this side, this is a regular um, just manual folding mirror. You just push it in. So um, it, it really sucks because uh, once you, you, know, you, you have your power mirrors connected and everything's connected up, you just click the push of a button. You lock your car. The mirrors will manually fold. And um, it, it's pretty cool, you know, to have that on an early 2000s, you know, car, especially if, if they branded it as a Lexus, it should have, you know, came with power folding mirrors. You know what I mean? It would have been, it would have been better. Uh, unfortunately, Toyota cheaped out and they didn't want to keep spending money. So they just use manual folding mirrors, but that's really, you know, that's a bummer that we missed out on that. Uh, but yeah, the Toyota Altezza, they do have power folding mirrors. Um, I do have one of them on my car but I don't have it wired up. It wouldn't make sense because I only have one and not two. But um, yeah, that's definitely something that us IS300 owners missed out on and it would have been a nice touch, you know, to add to the luxury, you know, going with the Lexus IS300. So I hope you guys did enjoy, um, you know, the little walk around of my car. I hope that some of the things that I let you know that I can't stand on this car, hopefully some of the things that I listed didn't trigger anybody, but I'm pretty sure everything I listed, a lot of people can um, agree with and you guys understand that you hate it just as much as me. With all that said, I'll see you guys in the next video. We'll probably be doing five things I hate about my Genesis Coupe. So stay tuned guys. Uh, these are super easy videos to make and I'll probably post all of them within this week. So um, yeah, just be sure to subscribe to the channel just so you don't miss them. I'll see you guys in the next video. My name is Lewis, this is Genflow, and I'm out. Peace.